Thank you. Then a very, very good evening and a welcome to all our smart traders. Diversity Smart Trade College is proud of our smart online trader course and our additional services. We believe it is not what we have to say about ourselves, but about the testimonials and feedback that we receive from our clients. These testimonials and feedback can be viewed on hellopeter.com, where Diversity Smart Trade College is rated number one in the educational sector. Our guru and preferred broker are also FSCA regulated. We are excited to see the names of our frequent attendees tonight, um, but need to say we have to give a very, very well, warm welcome to our guests. May this event be memorable. We have a busy lineup tonight and it's therefore my privilege to introduce our hosts for tonight. First up will be Mr. Francois Duplessis, our course and trading specialist, or as we in-house refer to him, our guru. And the second part of the event will, would pre, will be presented by Coach Andre Retief. I feel it is important to mention that Coach Andre is a master mentor, senior coach, and an evaluator at Comensa. And for those of you who don't know what Comensa stands for, it is the Institute for Coaches and Mentors of South Africa. We are proud to rub shoulders with these two individuals and truly master that we are truly masters in what they do and for sharing their experiences with us and with you tonight. With all of the above said, I give the floor over to our guru. Thank you very much, Mr. Francois. Rika, thank you so, so much. And well, now the official session for tonight starts. So welcome to tonight's psychology of trading session with my super special guest, Coach Andre Retief. And we know that during your trading, whether you are absolutely brand new or you are a trader that's been doing this for the last two, three, four years, psychology can be a massive, massive hurdle for you to overcome as a trader. Um, as you guys know, I always say that, you know, trading is 20% charts, 80% psychology, as there's so many things that we have to deal with from of a mindset point of view, whether it is FOMOing on a trade or over trading or, um, having to deal with losses, et cetera, et cetera. The list goes on. Now, as you guys read in the, the message that we said, Coach Andre has a super scientific, 100% uh, scientific approach to performance. And he's assisted me personally in the past. He's assisted a lot of our other um, support coaches as well, as well as our managing director, Mr. Franz Ostezen. Um, We've all had dealings with Coach Andre, and I can personally say that he's made a difference in my life. He's made a difference in my trading because he has made a difference in the way I approach my trading every single day. Um, and he doesn't have to be a trader to be able to do this because of the, the amazing coach that he is from that point of view. So he has some things that he is going to share with us in um, for the first part of the session. And then please, any questions that you might have for him, for me, anything regarding psychology of trading, something that if you are new, that you are wondering about, that you don't want to fall victim to, or if you have been trading for a while and is something that you are struggling with, please feel free to ask us whatever you need to do. Um, Coach Andre, all over to you. Thank you very much, Francois, and good evening, everybody. And thank you for this wonderful privilege. I'm really excited to maybe just share a couple of thoughts with you tonight. And I really trust and hope that it will be valuable to all of you. I must just say that about eight o'clock, we might have load shedding. So if it goes a little bit darker, apologies for that. It's beyond my control, but I'm sure we can still go through the whole presentation. So yes, the whole idea is just to share some thoughts and maybe it'll help you to trade better, to 
be more in control of your trading, etc. So I would just like to share some slides and see if I can uh, get to it. I don't know. Francois, you just need to help me here. Um, uh, Coach, right at the top of your screen, next to the leave button, there should be a share button. Are you finding it? Druk die groen knoppie. Diana. <laughs> uh, Coach Andre, I think you're yeah. muted. Uh, there we go. You're back. Okay. Okay, let's just see. I don't find what I'm looking for. Yeah, you uh, are sharing your screen. I just think you're sharing the, the wrong part of it. So if you click on share, you'll see it gives you a few options. So if you don't have a secondary screen, just click on Windows and it will allow you to choose whichever window you want to share. Okay, it doesn't give me a lot of options. My PowerPoint does not come on. Um, That's weird. <laughs> Your PowerPoint is open, right? Yes, it is open. I know teams can be weird about that sometimes. Still not sharing? Um, nothing on my side yet. My, yeah, as Tua Station says, teams can be weird sometimes. Um, but nothing's coming through yet on this side. Okay, wait, there we go. You find it. Okay, so, ah, perfect. Okay, apologies for that. I'm very good on Zoom, but my uh, Teams is not really my favorite. But anyway, we are here. Right, so we're going to talk a little bit about psychology of trading, and we're going to look at a couple of aspects tonight regarding the psychology of trading. And we will look at just the powerful mind, the conditioned or subconscious mind, just very briefly emotions and your emotional state, and also taking responsibility, which I think is very important. Now, if we just look at trading, what it can be, and it can be very overwhelming and a, and a very overwhelming action and a concept, it can be very scary. And in all honesty, even a lot scary at times. It can also be very emotional. But also, it can be rewarding, it can be fun, and it can be profitable. Now, in all honesty, however you want to look at it, the actual experience and results will basically be determined by your mindset. And in saying that, your state of being and also your behavior. I shared with the, uh, Francois the other day that I'm actually busy reading this book that it's the title is The Psychology of Money. And this person actually writes in the or says in the book, it's um, all about your behavior. And I think that comes into play quite strongly. So firstly, if we look at what influences our behavior and our trading, and also trading is influenced by emotions, it's influenced by thoughts and by our mindset, by our behavior, it's also influenced by the markets and also our intention, because what is our real intention in trading. And to think about that, some have the wrong intentions, some have great intentions, but as a matter of fact, all intentions are good. Whether it's in your world that it's good or in my world, we might differ on that, 
but the intentions are good. It's also influenced by discipline. Now, talking about a powerful mindset, if we think about it, trading can be very influential in so many areas of our lives to the point that it actually affects our thoughts, our emotions, our mindset, our behavior in such a way that it's present in every part of our lives. And whether we have good trades or whether we have bad trades, it's ever present in our lives. And therefore we need to have a very powerful mindset. And what that means is that we need to be focused and stay focused. Focus on what it is that we want and also what is our intention. And this will help us to be calm and to be in control. Now, Marcus Aurelius, as you can see on the slide, said, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. And we all know that we cannot control outside events, but we can control our mind. No one else can control our minds. We are the only ones. And that's why it's very important to really have a very powerful mindset. Now, many of us are aware that certain traits and skills are needed for us to trade successfully. And the most fundamental of these would be the mindset of the trader. And this refers to trading psychology, which can be divided into containing emotion, thinking quickly, and also to exercise discipline. Now, those three things are very important. Now, may I ask to think about how is trading affecting you and your life? And yes, we don't want to only look at it in a negative way, but we can address the issues that affect us in an unwanted manner. And that'll make trading so much better and much more fun too. And also, then you will get the desired the results that you want. So just briefly looking at that, the challenges that we might face would be fear. And that could be fear of failure, fear of losing, fear of anything. And then the greed factor, which we'll talk about just now. But greed can also be quite detrimental in your trading. And then that hope. Yes, don't lose hope. But sometimes we build everything around hope. And it's always striving for that, maybe, I just hope it will work out. I just hope this. I just hope that. And we could even take bad decisions based on hope. And then if things go wrong, it's that regret. So your mindset is also a challenge because it, do you have a positive mindset? Do you have a strong mindset? And when it becomes overwhelming, it can also be emotionally overwhelming and draining. Now think about it. When you've been emotionally drained, your whole body actually could even shut down. Some people have experienced that where they almost get paralyzed in a sense where they can't act because they've lost all this money now and things have just gone totally the opposite of what they expected. And this can cause confusion in creating objectives and actually clear decisions. Because if you're emotionally overwhelmed or drained, you're not going to have a clear mindset. You're not going to think clearly. You're not going to think what can I do to better this? What can I do to get out of the situation that I'm in right now? Now, if we can consider the conditioned or the subconscious mind, in coaching we refer to it a lot as the conditioned mind because it's been conditioned since the day that you actually existed. But we can also refer to it as a subconscious mind. Now, our outcomes is or results would be determined by our behavior or our actions. Now, what determines our actions or behavior? And there we can say our state determines our actions or behavior. And there we're not talking about the state of South Africa. Um, that obviously determines a lot of people's behaviors in a not so great way. But your emotional state or emotional well-being is responsible for your actions and your behavior. And that creates your results. But what affects or influences our emotional well-being? 
it is our conditioned mind or subconscious mind. So our state or emotional well-being is determined by what is being presented or processed by our conditioned mind. Now, think about that. When you're angry, a certain behavior will be manifested. Or when you are sad, it will, for example, show on your face, in your posture. You may even cry a little or a lot, whichever. But that is the result of your emotional well-being or non-well-being, where it could be a state of sadness, maybe a state of hurt or fear, anger, whatever it may be, even guilt, uh, resentment, bitterness, whatever it could be. So our behavior or actions is a result of our emotional well-being. Now, if you're angry, you may go wild or have certain actions and everyone around you will know that you are now really angry. Stay away. That person's angry. Don't go into his office. He's really angry. Or when you are hurting or sad or have a fear of something, there's normally certain results that show and certain behaviors that show. So our emotional well-being is a result of that what was presented or processed by our conditioned mind. Now, did you know that your subconscious mind or conditioned mind controls 95 to 97% of your behavior? It basically all comes from there. Now, this is an indication that it is conditioned to many things since we started to exist. That's why we call it that conditioned mind, because certain things have contributed to the way you act in certain situations, your reaction to things that happen. And it's very important, this factor that you need to realize the subconscious mind also doesn't know the difference between the truth or a lie. So therefore, everything it hears or experiences, it will believe. And that's why many times as children, we get told you just uh, a failure or you're just stupid, you're not clever. Your subconscious will believe that and you grow up believing that. So what happens is we shape our lives according to what has been presented to us. And think about your childhood. Many times clients can still very clearly remember those things that were said to them by parents or teachers or friends or other people. And to this day, they would even relate to you exactly when and where this situation occurred where they were told something and the sad part is those things are mostly bad or negative and we shape our lives according to it and many times we do we even do our best to live up to that label that's been put on us regardless whether it's good or bad now think about it words like failure stupid fat ugly and the list just goes on Think about those words. Maybe that has an effect on your life today. Maybe it's always having to that, that pressure to perform towards your parents to impress them or towards your spouse or someone or a friend. You always got to prove something because inside you have always been or you were labeled as a failure and you always feel that you're not living up to it, you're not good enough or whichever. And those are limiting beliefs that we carry our whole life and it affects us really, really bad. And the thing is, we, we all live in our own world. And what matters to me may not be important to you and vice versa. And I have my version of the world and you have your version. So for each one of us, it's different. And then there's the outside world. And we have a certain perception of how that should be. So ultimately, our conditioned mind determines our results. And in result, you are seeing one version of the world, and that is based on your internal filters or the way that your conditioned mind has been wired. So as a matter of interest, each one of us receives, and this might sound a little bit way over the top, we receive 400 billion bits of information per second, and then it gets processed 
and filtered to approximately 2,000 bits of information per second, which is then present, presented to your conscious mind. Now, that sounds like a lot, but if you think of it, there's summits that happened to you today or that you experienced today or didn't experience or thought you experienced. If you had to say, just driving back from work, how many traffic lights did you stop at? And how many billboards did you see on the side of the road? And yes, you probably would think, yes, I saw some, but I don't even know what it said. Because your filters had cut that out. You were not focused to actually experience that. And that is what happens. So we just sometimes see what we want to see. And think about it, we see the bad in situations instead of the good. We see the bad in people instead of the good. And this is now different for each one of us. And if you think there's so many things that we see or do not see or hear or do not hear or even smell or do not smell. But once you can change your filters, then you become aware of something and it's brought to your attention more and more. And think about this. If you want to, you decide now you want to buy a new car. Suddenly, now you're driving and you see, wow, there's so many of them around. And especially that color that I love and the model, it's just everywhere on the road. You Yet before you hardly ever noticed it because you were not focused on it. It wasn't brought to your attention. You drove past them, but you didn't even notice them. And saying this, energy flows where attention goes. And if we relate back to trading, if you got this fear and, oh, things are going to go wrong and I'm going to mess up, you're going to mess up. But if you change your whole thinking and you have a strong mindset and you change your whole approach to things, it might just be kind of a lot different. Because this applies to trading too. What filters are present for you? Are you focused on billions and then you fail to actually, uh, you fall to pieces when it fails? Are you realistic? What, what, is, what are your expectations for all this? How do you apply yourself to the, your world of trading? And if you think of it, the effect it could have on you as a trader is that you have a loss or a negative trade and it may have a bad or negative effect on your emotional well-being. Now you feel that you should just rather forget it, uh, just get out of it, just leave it, count your losses because you're just a failure and always fail at everything and you just said no good and you can never get anything done successfully. And you know these mind games and these ugly little things that sometimes we can tell ourselves. That little voice, that inner voice that talks to you and you have these real horrible negative conversations with. I'm sure we've all experienced that, and especially if you're driving in your car and you're all alone and everything just, you're on autopilot when you're driving and you start having these negative conversations with yourself or you're sitting there trading and things go wrong and you start beating yourself up really badly instead of going back to the basics and saying let me reassess where were where was i what can i do to do this better and put certain things into place so when you do not control your emotions especially when an aspect like money becomes relevant it could end up in disaster and possible financial ruin so be aware of your capabilities, be aware of your skills and also your limitations, especially when it applies maybe to your level of trading capabilities. Maybe you're not that great yet. Maybe you're not that experienced yet. Don't take those chances that's going to really get to your emotions and bring you down really, really badly. And the emotions can that come to the fore every, very strongly when trading, as I just touched on it before, fear greed, being nervous, that anxiety that you feel. And these are often more present than the positive emotions. Think about it. We have this self-doubt. We have this thing about what if I make a mistake? What if this? What if this? And ask yourself the question, what would happen if? And sometimes we would tend to put the negative on it. What would happen if I mess up? 
What would happen if I lose all my money? But what would happen if I take control? What would happen if I have this strong mindset? What would happen if I do it the way it should be done? What would happen if I put aside the greed or whatever it could be? And the, the, the idea is not to paint this awful picture of negativity, sorrow, and destruction, but rather to mention these in order to make your trading experiences pleasant, more profit, fr profitable, and also fun. Why not have fun while you're doing it? And if your mind is strong and directed towards the outcome you want, and you have these preset boundaries that you have in place together with your self-control, it's already a win-win situation. Remember, we need to have boundaries. So many areas of our life, we just run no boundaries. We just go, and sometimes we just say we just go with the flow or wing it. There's nothing that we set for ourselves to say, this is where I stop. I can't go beyond this, whatever. And that doesn't mean you're limiting yourself. It's just being in, better in control of your own life. And as in anything in life, there are challenges. And yes, things do not always turn out the way that we've hoped for. And that's where the mental toughness comes into play. That's where we as individuals need to step up, take responsibility, and steer away from blaming. So Vince Leonard, Leonard said, and I quote, mental toughness is Spartanism with qualities of sacrifice self-denial, dedication, it is fearlessness, and it is love. It means it's, a, it's balanced quite a lot. You can be mental mentally tough, but that is, doesn't mean that you act like a machine or a robot or something like that. You can still be human. So when the fear of loss comes into play, what you need to do, stop, take a step back, recheck your boundaries, Think and think some more. Think clearly. Regain your perspective and make the correct decisions. Don't let that anxiety and greed take over because that is where a lot of people experience the downfall. And there's, there's absolutely no situation when you trade that can cause you anxiety or fear or stress, greed, or make you nervous. Remember, it's your reaction to that situation that will cause it. So, strong and powerful mind, boundaries, calm, clarity, skill. Let it play out. And there's that thing that's nowadays the trend word that so many people use, the fear of missing out. And it's been there for a while now. And it's thrown around and for short, we call it FOMA. So according to the Urban Dictionary, it is the state of mental or emotional strain caused by the fear of missing out, a compulsive concern that one might miss an opportunity or satisfying event. Let this think in, think about this. And this is probably one of the most treacherous emotions, parabolically, it rises to entice traders to buy after the, the move has actually peaked. And this leads to huge emotional stress when the market reverses and moves in the opposite direction. And you as a trader must manage to benefit from the positive aspects of psychology while you manage the bad aspects. And this will enable you to be better placed to handle the volatility of the financial markets and become a better trader. And then, there's also the part where we blame. We blame everyone else or everything else that could be relevant when things don't go our way. And when this happens to you as a trader, what do you do? Now, here's just five tips to consider. And when things don't go your way, start with this and know what you are grateful for. How you feel is based on your understanding of how things are in your life right now. Knowing what you are grateful for and expressing this gratitude will impact your experience of your current reality. The daily practice of gratitude will result in a healthy, healthy attitude. 
focus on what gives you hope. Because hope is a feel of happiness. And that's the right kind of hope. And this is why you can be happy even when things are not going well, as long as you know they will. The best evidence to support hope is progress. When you focus on progress, you get to be happy. Become clear on what is important to you. The world is filled with more than 10 million things that could justifiably make you unhappy. But when you become clear on what is important to you, you are in fact making a decision that those things that could make, to make you unhappy won't. Resist the temptation to blame. The reality is that there will always be someone to blame. There will always be evidence to support that thing of being a victim. And the challenge is that the act of blaming never leads to happiness. It leads to many other emotions that steal moments that could be reversed for being happy. And exercise the choice of happiness. Happiness is a state of being. Every emotion is preceded by a series, a series of choices consciously as well as unconsciously. So being happy comes down to making a choice to be happy in spite of the circumstances. The choice is not obvious for most because we are mainly driven by avoiding pain and therefore think that we won't do anything to change the circumstances if we choose to be happy in them. So the choice of being happy comes with understanding that I'm responsible for my own happiness. And I want to relate this, these few points to trading. And if you lose, still know what you are grateful for. Still focus on what gives you hope. Be clear on what is important to you and resist the temptation to blame because that's going to be a downfall. And choose to be happy. If you've had a bad trade, that doesn't mean that you have to let go of your happiness. There's things more important in life than losing a couple of rand, whatever it may be. Maybe, and if you had your boundaries in place and uh, been in, in a good emotional state, Things won't go that wrong because you control yourself. So it is in the end about a couple of things which you can say manage your emotions. Managing emotions of trading can be the difference between growth or failure. Understand FOMO. Identify and, sup and suppress it as the minute you become aware of it. It might be challenging and there will always be that another opportunity to trade. So don't get that thing of, oh, I'm desperate. I need to do this now. I need to. And you carry on and you carry on and eventually end up in a bad way. Avoid trading mistakes. Yes, you're going to make mistakes. But also try to understand and analyze what really happened. What did I do wrong? And learn from those mistakes. And then overcome that greed. Control your greed. Because it sets in so easily, but you need to know when it kicks in and it'll create, it'll cause you to actually make bad decisions. You're going to, you almost become reckless when that greed kicks in. And when you become reckless, imagine what's going to happen. You're going to end up having a really bad trade and you're going to lose a lot of money. And after that, when people talk about trade, you actually want to get sick. Be consistent. As with many things in life, consistency is key. Self-control also plays a role here. Have some strategy, stick to it. And it needs to be a workable and an effective strategy. Go sit, think, what is my strategy? How am I going to do this? Yes, you get all the knowledge. You get all these webinars where you can learn. But go and think, what works for me? What will I be comfortable with? And when you trade with your feelings, remember that emotions take over and the end could end up as a disaster. Avoid those rumors. Do not listen to advice from people that do not know because rumors start to cause anxiety, FOMO and the other negative emotions. Have that positive attitude because this will take you far. And when you experience a loss, it will also help you to stay focused if you still have that positive attitude. It's not going to have that effect on you where your whole world has suddenly fallen in and fallen apart and crumbled down. 
Also keep your ego at bay. And that means to be disciplined and consistent, be humble and stay focused. You have nothing to prove to anyone else but yourself. And that's where we sometimes make a mistake. We always want to get into this way where we can show off so you can tell someone else how much you made in 10 minutes or something like that. So keep that ego at bay. Wait to become despondent. If you do it right, you will stay positive. You're going to absorb the few losses you're going to have. But if your risk management is in place, there's not going to be the, those impactful losses um, to make you lose hope and actually become despondent. I think it's light shading. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. I think, um, so I do know that Coach Andre has load shading at eight. So I think his power just switched off. He did tell me prior to the session that he does have an inverter. There we go. I think he's back. Coach, you are still muted. Um, Coach Andre, yeah, it's not a mute, Meneer. <laughs> there okay, we go. Sorry. Yeah, okay. Are we back? Okay, so uh, let me just get uh, the trade size. I think that was where I was last. Now what you are comfortable with as it will also lower the emotional effect on yourself. So don't go and over uh, extend yourself when you know for sure that it's not going to work if things go wrong. It's, it's going to be a dangerous area. And then also relax. Slow down. If you want to go fast, slow down. And this will also create calmness. There's a good video on YouTube if you want to go and watch it. If you feel the need to speed up, slow down. It's really valuable. Sometimes we want to just jump into things and it doesn't work well. And we need to just take that step back assess the situation and be calm the more calmness you can uh, have in your in your inner self the better you're going to think the more effective you're going to trade and then the wins celebrate those wins however small they are you need to celebrate you deserve it and the more you celebrate the more things the universe will send you to celebrate now, this will inspire you to keep at it and to enjoy it. It'll get you excited for experiencing that next win. You're going to look forward to the next win. You're going to be so positive and in such a good state of being. And remember this phrase tonight. And if this is the only thing that you can take away from you, just remember this. Discipline equals freedom. Now, this can apply in all areas of your life. And also so much for trading. Discipline your thoughts. Discipline your emotions. Discipline your behavior. Discipline your ego. Discipline equals freedom. The more disciplined you are in your areas of life, and that doesn't mean you, don't, you can't live and you always got to watch for everything. Just be disciplined. If you're financially disciplined, you can have financial freedom that everyone talks about. If you're going to be disciplined in your daily exercise, you can have more freedom of movement and be more fit. So in every area, if you discipline your thoughts, you can have more freedom of thought. So if that's the only thing you take with to, away from tonight is remember this discipline equals freedom. And discipline your trading. 
discipline you. And then you can make each day and each trade your masterpiece. Make it count. Make it amazing. And make it the best. Because you can. And I think there I'm going to end for this evening. And I just want to say thank you very much for listening. I hope this was valuable to you. But really take this to heart. And if you have any questions, you can ask the Guru Francois. Um, but we'll try and answer if there are any questions that come up. So I'm going to just stop sharing here. Are we back to the normal screen? No, not yet. Hmm. I think we are now. I think we are. You guys should be seeing my screen now. Yes. Can you all see my screen? Fantastic. Coach Andre, thank you <laughs> so, so much for that. Um, doesn't happen often that I have nothing to say, but I honestly, I'm sitting here, I'm speechless. I have about five pages of notes here um, that I literally wrote down from exactly what you now said. And it, it was just so amazing just to also hear someone else's perspective on a lot of things that we do. And it's so awesome to see how so many of those things, you know, tie in with what we do every single day. And I mean, literally right in the beginning, you spoke about taking responsibility and that kind of stood out for me because a lot of times when I deal with traders as well, there's this cons consistency of, you know, blaming the market, blaming market conditions, blaming the broker, blaming this, blaming Wi-Fi, <laughs> blaming ESCOM for load shedding. There's so many things that we can, you know, blame for our trades um not going the way we want them to go instead of exactly doing what you said with regards to analyzing what went wrong analyzing what actually happened and then prevent it in the future yes correct and just that, that kind of made my night. And then obviously there's a lot of things that you shared after that as well. And, you know, just adding to that taking responsibility, that that quote you had there, and I literally wrote that quote down with, with your name next to it and with your permission, it's going on my, my social media tomorrow because it's absolutely fantastic <laughs> with regards to the act of blaming never leads to happiness. And it, it's so, so true in the sense of that, blaming, you know, as I said, ESCOM, the market, you know, conditions that we are in um, mm -hmm. and everything that we do on a daily basis, at no point in stage does that action of blaming solve the problem. It just leads to additional negativity. It leads yes. to your mindset getting worse. It leads to over trading, FOMO trading, you know, just entering into positions you're not supposed to be in because of the fact that it's, it's not me, it's everyone else and everyone's against me. And after a while, you are in such a, a state of depression that everything in your life just goes wrong. Not just your trading, like yes. everything, you know, from a, a physical, spiritual work life, everything, even your relationship with your spouse can suffer from exactly that. And it's absolutely amazing. So thank you so, so much for sharing that. It's a pleasure. Guys, is there any questions that you want to ask Coach Andre? Um, I'm going to give it a few minutes just for any, any questions. And so let's just see if there's any questions coming through before I do continue. And as I said in the beginning of the session, if you have no questions, you know, you are allowed to type there, wow, thank you, uh, or I have no questions, um, mind blown emoji. That, that one is specifically appropriate after this session. So, because I know that's how I feel right now, you know, I'm, I'm posting the mind blown emoji there right now. Um, 
any questions, guys? Absolutely anything. So Ruan says, thank you. Fantastic. Um, uh, Mr. Garrett, Guru. Then. Yes, sir. Guru, sorry for interrupting. Um, Not a problem. Obviously, our traders, clients can also reach out to Coach Andre directly and his practice. Um, you know, it, it, this is the service that we offer our clients does not only relate to trading or, or money matters, but, you know, if, if they've got students, you know, or children at school or knowing, you know, friends, maybe um, relatives um, who are doing year end exams, matriculants and so on and so forth. They are more than welcome to reach out to Coach Andre. Um, if they need perhaps, you know, relationship coaching. And no, we're not talking about marriage counseling. Um, relationship coaching, you know, uh, whatever. If Coach Andre can maybe just share his contact details um, in, in, the, in the chat. Um, and then they're more than welcome to, coach, uh, to contact Coach Andre. Um, obviously, are all, um, you know, uh, 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 Coach Andre ensures... Uh, you know, confidentiality in that regard's got nothing to do with us. Um, but yeah, if they just want to reach out, have a nice chat to him, um, you know, what, whatever the case might be, they're more than welcome. Uh, and please, this is not a psychological session as well, okay? Uh, Coach Andre doesn't prescribe any Bernardo's or Ritalin or any of that shit. Um, but, but you're more than welcome to contact him directly, please. So if we can just get Coach Andre's contact details in the chat, and they welcome to do that. Thanks. That's it from my side. Awesome. Thank you, Mr. Ostas. And I think Coach Andre is busy typing that in right now. Can I still see? So I still see that I have some new people here. Um, so I just wanted to share something with you guys before we actually end of tonight's session. So we spoke a lot about the mindset that goes into trading and the psychology of trading during this session. And I just wanted to share two specific trades with you guys. Now, the one, if you want to go have a look at it, you can go onto our YouTube channel. So that is Diversity Smart Trade College. Um, by the way, as I'm saying that, Coach Andre just posted his contact details in the chat section. So that is Andre at arcoachinginstitute.co.za. That's his email. He also posted his cell phone and WhatsApp contact details. So guys, as Mr. Westhausen said, please, if there's anything that you need assistance with, he's the guy to phone. As I said, I've had sessions with him. Um, most of my team have had sessions with him. And it has truly benefited me and all of them as well. So he is amazing at what he does. So if you need help as well, get in touch with him. So as I was saying, there's two specific trades that I want to share with you guys. So if you are new here and this is the first time that you have attended any one of our sessions, this is coaching sessions or even um, analysis sessions, et cetera. I just wanted to share this with you guys as well. If you were invited to attend this, just something that you can expect from Smart Online Trader and how it is actually possible to grow your finances. So the two trades that I chose to share with you guys are complete opposites from each other. So the one is a swing trade, which took five days. Now, that five-day trade is the one that you are currently seeing on your screen right now. And which I hope you guys are seeing. Mr. Mr. Are you guys are you guys seeing my screen? Yes or no? Yes, I can see your screen. Can I just okay. interrupt you quickly? Of course you can. Just very quickly. Um, sorry if the dogs start, start barking. Just uh, excuse my daughter. Just came back from school, whatever you call it. So if the dogs start barking, it's not me. Okay. Um, I, I, I just want to ask, uh, let, let's say we, we've got clients or new traders online and they've got a five uh, you know or 10k in a savings account or, or they've got access to it so so just to do a quick calculation if they were to put that five or, or let's make it easy let's say 10k they leave that mm -hmm. in a, a, a savings account or an investment account um you know and and they would get like let's say guaranteed not that i know of any um banking institution in south africa that offers that Let's say they would get 
you know, guaranteed um, 10 percent on on that, then that obviously would amount to a thousand rand, right? Am, am I right in saying that? Um, I also great. read it on Bloomberg, I think it was on Friday, Saturday, um, of the um, states, the USA, that's in a massive uh, uh, predicament, because they're not sure what, what they should do with the interest rate. Should, should they, you know, um, uh, oh, not interest rate, inflation, inflation, should they, you know, lower it on the one side, or should they increase you know, interest on the other side. Uh, whichever way, um, the consumer ends up paying the price, no matter which way you look at it, right? The Fed, sorry, it's the Fed in, in, the, in the USA, right? So you would then earn a thousand rand. That, that would give you an average of, you know, two rand and 74 cents per day if you were to leave it there for a year, right? Have I got that right? But Perfect. you've got to leave it there for a year. If, if you're going to need that money in two months or three months, six months, then you're obviously not going to get the guaranteed 10%. Am I right? So, so mm -hmm. let's assume for the sake of the example that you're going to use now, if a new trader with limited to zero knowledge were to enter our program, number one, take control of their money. Um, Coach Andre spoke earlier on. You also touch a lot on this in your coaching sessions that we should focus on things we've got control over right? We've got no control over inflation. We've got no control over interest rates. We've got no control over, uh, uh, um, you know, the prices of, of, of consumables, right? Shit, if you live in Gauteng, you've got no control over the weather, um, you know? So, so my, my, my question is, or the statement I want to make rather, is focus on the things that we do have control over. And I always tell my clients, um, inflation is like the Robin Hood of the 21st century, right? My definition for inflation is taxation without legislation. That's what I call it, right? So the, well, what did Robin Hood do? Robin Hood stole from the poor and gave to the, or from the wealthy and gave to the poor. So now the Robin Hood of the 21st century is, you know, that one stealing from the ignorant and paying the informed. So which one do people want to be? Do they want to work their asses off, put their money in a bank? A bank is a business, right? A business, that bank, that business doesn't want your cash, actually. That's why they get rid of it and dump it into, you know, uh, uh, other investment options, right? Um, they do big, massive developments, they own or they buy shares in other listed companies. Who owns the shares? They do. So a bank is a business. It's not a non-profit organization. A bank makes money by transacting. That's why you pay through your neck on, on transactional fees, right? So focus on things that we do have control over. What do I have control over? Number one, I earned that money, my salary. I work my ass off, off for it. 160 hours a, a month. I've got to work 30 plus days, 22 days a month for one paycheck. And unfortunately, 90% of that money is potentially spent on, on debt. You know, there's an old saying, nobody just work to pay off debt and, you know, die. No. Okay. We want to make every day payday. So poor people work 20 days for other people, 22 days a month for other people earning an income only to spend 80 to 90% of that income on debt, right? So you've got control over the money that you work for. You know the time, you know the effort, everything that you put into it, okay? You've got control over who you're going to trust with it. You've got control over where you, how you want to get that money to work for you instead of you working your ass off, putting it into an institution, and they get the benefit for it. So there are other options which coach, uh, um, you know, our guru now, Francois will explain to you and show to you with the right level of knowledge and expertise how it is possible to make every day payday and not just have one payday a month. Yes, you need to apply proper, proper risk management. Um, if you don't apply proper risk management, of course, obviously, we understand how hard you work for your money. 
um, if you've got an illness, you're not going to trust the Sangoma on a street corner to give you some muti and hopefully tomorrow you're going to be better. No, you're going to seek for the best possible medical advice. The same with your money. Uh, Diversity Smart Trade College, who partners with only the best, like Coach Andre uh, Francois, who's got years and years of experience trading the markets himself. In fact, you just heard him say in the beginning of the session that he even, even he himself executes his own um, trade signals or trade ideas. We, we, we trust our clients' money or control or, or rather give them advice and guidance on it as if it were our own, even though there are many things we don't have control over. So shit does happen from time to time, but that's why it's important to apply proper risk management and also understand the psychology of trading. So enough from my side, um, coach, if, if, if you can just show, instead of putting my five or 10K in, in a bank, you know, saving people, saving is dead, okay? Saving doesn't, doesn't work anymore. We don't live in the 1970s or 80s anymore. The laws of money and wealth creation have changed. The game has changed. And it's imperative that everybody need to get that financial intelligence. Understand how money works. Money is nothing. It's bugger all. Uh, it's what it does for you where the true value lies and how you can put it to work. So, coach, if you can just, if you don't mind, just in using that example, if I had five or 10K, you know, if I executed it on, on one of the trades, and just to be clear on this, Francois just doesn't sit in the morning and thumbs up, oh, shit, you know, there are more than 150 currency pairs or commodities, you know, what the hell can I do for the people today? No, there's a shit, a ton load of, of time that goes into, um, you know, providing a trade idea or a live trade signal. There's technical analysis, fundamental analysis, a lot of reading up to do, um, putting his ear on, on the railway track to listen, you know, what's coming, what is going. Um, so, so this is really, really imperative that you all understand. Um, you know, it, it, it's not about money itself, but it's, it's all about what you can do with money. And I'm a firm believer that we were created to live life in abundance no, it, it's not about prosperity teachings or buying materialistic things. But I firmly believe that the God that I serve created me so that my account can overflow so that that money, the, the reward, um, the fruit that it's got to bear must add value to the economy. It must change people's lives. That's what it's all about for me. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Westeisen. Well. For those of you who here don't know me, okay, I did obviously introduce myself in the beginning, and I love the fact that um, Mr. Westeisen actually mentioned the fact that, you know, when you put your money into a bank, and <laughs> I think he kind of did that on purpose, I don't know, he, he does some weird things from time to time, but my past, where I came from, that's how I got my start. I was an institutional trader, I was a bank trader. I was that guy who took the money that you left in your fixed term deposit account that you got nine or 10% if you were lucky with. Um, I was the guy who made 40, 50% per annum for the bank with that cash. Okay. And then they gave you 10%. So not really fair, but it was really good for their bottom line. And since I left, I made it my absolute life goal to assist people in improving their own financial situation. Now, yes, there are other investments that you can make that do earn long-term potentials or long-term growth or revenue for your investment. That is true. And I actually made a YouTube video about it about a week ago where I said, you know, if you invested your money into a bank 10% per annum, for 10 years, that's 160% growth in 10 years, okay, if you compound it over that time. And if you invest it into something simple like an S&P 500 index, 
instead of 160, that would have been 280% growth, which is also great. But the S&P 500 does fall victim to inflation from time to time, exactly like Mr. Westhazen just mentioned. And inflation is currently worldwide at an all-time high. The U.S. two months ago, the inflation rate was 9%. It has come down a little bit. It's still at 8.2%. And for those of you who don't know, the U.S. inflation rate is currently higher than South Africa's. Okay, so South Africa is not doing so bad at the moment, guys. And this is where I want to show you what we can do, for instance, with regards to why trading specifically is inflation-proof. Now, when trading, and specifically trading derivatives, um, someone just took over my screen. Okay. Can everyone see my chart? You should be looking at my chart at the moment. Can I just have like a yes or a thumbs up or something? Okay. Fantastic. So this was a a trade that I shared on the LMS via my daily market analysis a week ago. And this specific trade, now this was a swing trade, and this came to fruition in five days. Now, Mr. Westhazen spoke specifically about, you know, 10,000 Rand. And if you know me as a trader, I don't like taking excessive risk. Why? Because at no point in stage are you ever going to be 100% accurate. So as a trader, we have to know our risk to reward ratios. We know our expectations and we know our statistics. And if I know those things, I can plan my trades accordingly. But now I want to show you something really, really fantastic on this. If you entered into this trade, and as I said, this is an inflation-proof trade because why we actually shorted the market on this. Now, I know that's a really weird term for some of you. For some of you, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But if you don't know what I'm talking about, that just means instead of buying, I sold. Okay? So as people were losing money to inflation, we were making money. Because why? We sold into the market. Okay, we said that this specific instrument is going to lose money, it's going to lose value, and we entered into a sell position. Now, if you only risked 5% of your account, so that is 500 Rand of that 10,000 Rand that you have available to you, just by entering into one trade on this specific pair, Within a matter of five days, not a year, not five months, not five years, five days, you would have made 22.5% growth. And remember what I said, you didn't risk your entire account. You didn't put your entire 10,000 Rand into the investment. We only risked 5% of your capital on the specific trade idea. And that generated 22.5% growth on the full amount. So in five days, I made double what the bank gives you in 365 days. So this right here is how diversity can assist you in growing your money faster, but also safer. Because remember, at the end of the day, if you are planning to look at trading or joining uh, my trading channel, my coaching sessions, as this is a get rich quick scheme, I am going to ask you to please log off because this is not what that is. This is you learning educating yourself how to correctly manage your capital and your investment portfolio to grow it to something larger, to grow it in a way that you can't at a bank 
or through most institutions. Now, this trade specifically that I just showed you guys, as I said, 22.5% in five days. Now, I want to show you guys one more. And this was my trade for today. So this morning around about nine o'clock on the trading channel for Smart Online Trader, for those traders on here, they can testify if I'm lying or not. I shared this trade right here. I shared my analysis. I shared what to do. So if you are new, you're probably not going to understand what to do at this point in stage. And I'm not going to go into detail right now. But if you have a look right here, this was our second gold trade for the day. The first one also made money. But our second gold trade for the day. Now, if you risked 5% again on this specific trade, you would have made 7.5% growth on your account in 90 minutes. Not 90 days. Not 90 hours, 90 minutes. So that's 7.5%. That is basically what most banks give you in, an, in a year. I made that an hour and a half. The traders on our trading channel made that in an hour and a half. And you can too. All you need to do is get in touch with us. Please. I do see I have a bunch of messages. I'm just going to read that to you guys quickly. So, uh, well, Francois, yes, yes, Mr. Thank so much, yes, thank you so much for Leon, Leon's um, um, comment here as well or his feedback. We value that. But uh, I'd like you to, you know, just quickly elaborate, especially on what Petronella shared here. I think it's very, very true and, 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 and valuable information for our new um, clients. Well, for me as well, I also take a lot out of it with you know fr from her comment here okay fantastic so petronella actually shared i felt bad a week or so ago when i traded dow jones the signal said sell many of us made great profits i felt bad because family in the u.s had to set up their 401k in the dow jones stock the announcement that dropped us to take the profits dropped their 401k quite a bit I'll be trading and not saving. Wow. Um, my opening statement where I said the S&P 500, you would have had greater growth. Now, this is the sad part. You would have had greater growth within the S&P 500 than you would have in your bank account. You would have had greater growth on the Dow Jones Industrial a um, Average Index than you would have in a savings account. So we are still leveling up. But as Pietronella says here, her family in the US, they're in, their investment, their 401k. Now, if you don't know what a 401k is, in South Africa, we call it a retirement annuity or a pension fund. Okay, That is a 401k in the US. Now, your pension fund, your retirement annuity gets invested Exactly the way Pietronella also explained here. Now, in South Africa, you will invest it into JSE 40, et cetera, et cetera, or not you, but the institutional investor. And here, that 401k is primarily invested into the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And there's a reason why, because the Dow Jones Industrial Average is made up of the 30 top blue chip stock companies within the USA. In other words, the best of the best. And they are still losing money. And as Pietronella said, the analysis that I shared with them last week said exactly that. We knew prior to the inflation that this is going to happen. Um, prior to NFP, this is going to happen. So we set out the analysis we sent out the trade idea and we shared to sell, short the market and make money on the Dow Jones as it is falling. Now, unfortunately, there are other investors or other traders who went the opposite direction. So as they were losing money, our trades were making profit. And you can too. 
as Mr. Westhazen said earlier, modern day Robin Hood in the sense of if you are not going to e educate yourself, if you are going to, and I mean this with the greatest amount of respect, if you are going to stay ignorant to how the financial market works and how your money gets managed by institutions such as banks, uh, Alan Gray, Old Mutual, Liberty, etc. You are always going to be one step behind. You are not going to get to that financial freedom that you desire unless you already have quite an amount of capital. But again, it's going to grow at a very slow pace where we can already show you how this can improve your life and you can get that growth within days, within a few weeks, instead of years. And you can start seeing growth on your portfolio in a really quick amount of time. If you put in the time and the effort and you assist us and help us to help you, and how do you do that? You actually just work through the educational content that we provide for you. You educate yourself on the market. You educate yourself on how the markets work. And then from there, use the trade ideas that we share with you and execute them correctly. Because why? If I share a trade idea with you, and you have no idea what I'm basing that trade on. Why? Because you haven't educated yourself on how we analyze the market and what we see. You are going to execute that perfect trade idea that you are currently seeing on your screen and lose money. That is how beautiful that is. Okay. Is that you will still execute a winning trade and lose money because of a lack of understanding. But if you focus on attending my coaching sessions, working through the content that we have available on our LMS, um, and educating yourself on how our programs work, you can have fantastic growth on your account. So, Gile says she trades gold every day. Well, then me and you are going to get along great because I trade gold every day too. Um, Francois, okay, you don't solve money problems with money. You solve money problems with education. Absolutely. Um, money is a very, very jealous lover. If you neglect it, it will move on to someone who is willing to pay attention. Absolutely true. If you are not consistently educating yourself, consistently growing your knowledge, on what is going on in the markets and how it works. This is an ever-changing industry. This is an ever-changing market. And if you are not educating yourself on how it works, you are going to get left behind. And money is going to flow somewhere else and it's going to be out of your pockets and into someone else's. So, yes, guys, any questions? Any comments, anything from your side before we go? Um, it's an 